All lay Dominicans know they can trace their roots back 800 years to when Dominic de Guzman formed the Order of Preachers with the blessings of Pope Innocent III. The friars needed looking after, and that is where the first lay people entered the order. Through those years, lay Dominicans have gathered to pray the rosary or the divine office. Some lay Dominicans were exceptional. St. Catherine of Siena and Pierre Giorgio Frattari as examples. These people were very much different in outcome from the average lay Dominican of today. By 1960, just as the position of the whole church was being reevaluated and we were on the verge of the Novus Ordo, renowned theologian Edward Skillip XOP took up the question of the lady in a paper titled The Dominican Third Order, Old and New Style. His conclusions were devastating. He wrote, No perceptive person can still deny that the Third Order today has become a problem. That is not a regional problem, but rather a universal one. As we consider this factual construction, it becomes evident to us that the Third Order has become a devotional prayer society. Concretely, as a matter of fact, only for older people. There is a monthly gathering with a mass, a sermon, and a bit of office. We don't want to admit Father Skillebeck's conclusion but we know that a true mirror of our lives will not deceive us. We gather, we say the office, and we talk about religious things. Some chapters, however, engage in particular ministries together. In Portland, a homeless camp. In Seattle, a woman's wellness clinic. Elsewhere, the conducting of religious processions. All acts of preaching the gospels by lay Dominicans. Some individual lay Dominicans perform their own ministries as members of the order. There are ministers within parishes, artists in the Dominican Institute for the Arts, writers who work in books and Catholic newspapers. Still the question remains, are all or most lay Dominicans preachers of something? The rule of lay Dominicans once read that those lay people joining the order should, quote, preach with their lives, end quote. But what has changed in the world since those days? Three things have changed in the world that have the gravest impact on lay Dominicans in their call to preach. One, since 1970, the number of Dominican religious have declined by 60%, according to Pew Research. Two, Western culture itself has changed from one with a belief in the Almighty to one that is relativistic, secularizing, solipsistic, counter-rational, and takes its ideas from both ideology and emotions. Three, and this is most important, the General Chapter of Talot, Ireland, 1971, stated emphatically, quote, the doctrinal mission of the Order of Preachers can no longer be adequately achieved without the participation and active assistance of lay people, a laity who are concerned with present day problems, questions of science, united in the spirit of the order. But what does it mean that the doctrinal mission of the order can no longer be adequately achieved without the help of the laity, particularly an informed laity? This question was asked of several lay Dominicans around the globe, and the response was, unfortunately, passive. It did not strike any of those asked as anything particularly urgent, and the fact that it had been stated 50 years earlier without much occurring since left no indelible mark. Two facts here. Number one, can no longer be adequately achieved is a simple, strong declarative sentence. The general chapter was not fooling around. Number two, since then the general chapters have removed designations like first, second, and third order and have elevated the laity to an equal share of the mission. If indeed the exhortation of the Talat general chapter was as stated, why the urgency? The answers, of course, are those stated earlier. Dominican religious have declined by 60%, a devastating figure. 
and the world, particularly Western culture, has turned for the worst. What about the sanctity of life being relegated to a personal choice? 60 million dead preborn children. That is more than Mao, that is more than Stalin, that is more than Hitler, and more than Pol Pot. And it's on us. What about the diminishing of the nuclear family, the cornerstone of all Western culture? What about the sanctity of marriage when faced by same-sex unions? These things are real, all too real. Schools at all level are teaching that the only thing important is a person's skin color, not the Amagio day where each and every human being was created in the image of God and his personal dignity because of that. Government will always lean toward labeling people a commodity to be controlled and their human nature amended again for the worst. As Christians, especially as Catholics, we have something to depend upon. The promise that Christ made to the apostles and to us in Matthew 16, 18. On this rock I will build my church. The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. This promise gives us hope to carry on in the face of evil. Dominicans, lay and religious, are the ones to bring that hope to the world by preaching the good news. But with the radical decline of religious, the decline in Western culture, lay Dominicans are the only ones who can carry the good news into the marketplaces, the workplaces, the schools, the neighborhoods, and the families, because those are the places we live. As Father Augustine Hillander, Western provincial promoter, stated during St. Dominic's Day with the three Phoenix area lay chapters, quote, to find a need, we need to pray, end quote. Here's the thing, however. The natural charity of the Christian leans toward the poor. But what about the poor in spirit? What about the powerful politician who thinks that abortion is just a matter of personal choice and supports laws protecting it and other laws that devalue human life and dignity? What about the elite college professor who somehow believes that Marxist tyranny is okay and teaches our students that America is always oppressive? What about the school board who has fallen under the curse of critical race theory and wants to mandate that students be taught that white skin itself is bad and oppressive? These people don't need food, shelter, or clothing, but their souls are on the line and their actions impact many others, causing some of them to need food clothing, and shelter. The question then becomes, for those who are not helping and administering to the poor, who's available to turn toward the poor in spirit in order that the kingdom of God be realized someday on earth? Who will preach in all those places where the postmodern worldview is pushing human dignity out of the public arena? It is going to take committed lay Dominicans who crave something beyond the once a month chapter meetings and who are able to embrace the study of things of the world in order to apply the gospel message to it. Study and prayer, along with community support for preaching projects, will be the key to success. An example of this, one lay chapter in Mesa once gave workshops on the social doctrine of the church as applied to political decision-making around political campaign time. Some members of that chapter have decided to make that a diocesan-wide permanent ministry. We are drawn back to a fact. The Dominican order is the order of such great thinkers as St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Albert the Great, Cardinal Thomas Caetan, who crossed intellectual swords with Luther. Fray Francisco Vittoria, the father of international law and human rights. Marie Dominique Chenu. 
Edward Skillebex, along with many others. With people like these, we know that the order has a great intellectual tradition to complement a great pastoral tradition. In this postmodern world, ideas, as much as hunger and homelessness, now place the innocent directly on the battlefield of life. Scripture, theology, and philosophy have been the weapons that Dominicans have used in the past. Where might we find such an armory? We already have scripture, theology, and philosophy available to us, but even more is needed. Social sciences, particularly sociology and psychology, plus the empirical sciences like biology, genetics, paleoarchaeology, and others. Fortunately, today, we have such a castle from which to wage the war against evil ideas. A website at www.instituteforlaydominicanpreaching.com This website was created by Lay Dominicans for Lay Dominicans. It includes a brief history of the Lay Branch of the Order, the facts surrounding the call to preach, and a plethora of reference materials from books, websites, journals, and videos. It hosts a forum as well. The most important thing about this website, however, is the School for Lay Dominican Preaching, an online school with courses in theology, preaching, the social doctrine of the church, and a reasonable look at issues of the world and how lay Dominican preaching can affect them. With these tools and our own determined commitment, we can affect positive change in the world. What are some of the things we can do, that is to say, ministry, with these tools? We know we have all the traditional acts of charity that require help, but here is the other side of the proverbial wall. Number one, teaching parish members to pray the liturgy of the hours and what it means. Two, moderating a weekly or daily prayer session. Three, teaching the rosary and its meaning. Four, teaching the catechism and especially how it can affect our lives. Five, teaching the social doctrine of the church, both towards political decision-making and towards social action, that is to say, peace and justice. Six, teaching a workshop on the true meaning of justice in the world. Seven, moderating a religious book club. Eight, running an advocacy group for things like hunger, homelessness, racial inequality, or any social action. Nine, Running communication groups on social issues that need to be addressed by government leaders. Writing letters, calling, visiting, marching. 10. Giving speeches to civic groups about the truth of social issues. 11. Writing books, newspaper articles, making movies. 12. Holding youth science classes in which church doctrine is illustrated. The list goes on and on. The plain fact is that the postmodern worldview is overrunning our moral values, the hopes of the world, and even our identities as human beings. This is an intellectual problem that requires the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas and others who know human nature and its place in God's creation. We, as lay Dominicans, preachers of the word, must study and pray and dig in against the tide of despair. If you are ready to step into the ever-widening gap and face an evil that has people thinking anything but the truth, go to www.instituteforlaydominicanpreaching.com and get started.